Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Today you join me here for another race analysis, and this is from the first round of the 2021 Cal Speed Sprint Series. Now, the Sprint Series this year, I was hoping to move up the field in, and over the off season with the work I put in, there's definitely progress, and I'm really happy with how it's going so far. My goal overall from an set one would be to be, I would say, top 20 overall. I think I'd be pretty happy with that. And with the new licensing system, to be the highest of the bronze drivers would be my goal, and currently I'm second in that. But let's take a look back at this round because it was my first time in the A main, and the back of the A main in the sprint series, oh my, it's entertaining, let's just say. Now, one important thing to point out about this race, which made it really interesting, was the weather conditions. So in the winter, luckily at Cal Speed, it's not too hot. It was about 70 degrees, very nice out. Except the average wind was over 20 miles an hour, and then you had gusts that were over 40. Now, as you might know with car racing, for example, Formula One, IndyCar, you name it, one of the most important factors is called the slipstream. The slipstream is where you get behind another car, that car in front cuts a hole in the air, and the back car can get much faster. You look at a track like Monza, the slipstream effect is crazy. Well, in go-karting, there really isn't too much of a slipstream effect. If there is one, it's maybe half a second per lap, and the Cal Speed carts tend to actually have a decent slipstream effect. This race, though, was just crazy. Because of the big gusts of wind, if you were going 40 miles an hour at the end of the straightaway, or the 40 mile an hour headwind on top of that, you were hitting about 80 miles an hour worth of headwind. So, the slipstream effect was really enhanced, and it got you about one to two seconds per lap, which, for karting, that's crazy. And as you'll see in this race, if you weren't in the slipstream, you just lost time. And it's hard to make up the time, even if your raw pace is good through the corners, because you're just not gonna make it up on the straightaways. And just to prove how crazy the wind was, turn one was flat out. Turn one is usually never flat out. You always have to lift there, occasionally hit the brake. So that just shows how crazy it was. So here we are heading to the grid. And like I said, I'm starting in 27th. Looking at the flagger, waiting for the flag to drop. A few moments later. There we go. So off the line, I kind of get an average start and it seems to be no one's really gaining where I am. So there's Aiden Villancor, also known as Aiden Whips. And so my goal with him, I talked to him before the race, was we were just gonna try to bump draft and work our way through. And I'm getting a decent start working my way through the field. Coming up to turn four, always usually chaotic on lap one. And surprisingly, not too much actually happened. I'm just staying calm, working my way through the field, and I make a risky move here, as you'll see. I'm trying to go three wide into the new Otivo hairpin. And the new Otivo hairpin, it's one of those hairpins where it's not quite tight enough to overtake, but you can't really go two or three wide because it's just slight lift. So if you look at the situation, here we are three wide, and I'm essentially trying to commit to the outside. And this guy, he either doesn't see me or forces me wide. But the other thing, I didn't commit to it. So that's why I just kind of fell back there. Now, should I have committed to it? Probably not, so I think I made the good choice there. But I ended up lifting and sacrificing a ton of speed. And what would have happened had I committed, I would have gone over this very bumpy curb and yeah, I wouldn't have done me any good. So kind of a, just an iffy situation. Should have just lifted, put myself behind, but oh well. So losing a little bit of uh, time there, losing a position. So we're back to 27th. And so again, working myself on the inside for the Monaco hairpin and I felt really confident on the brakes that day and down the inside and we send it past three, four. It's Quinn Allen Riley right there. And through here, I'm expecting to get a good exit and I don't. Because what ends up happening is I put myself on the outside for horseshoe and then I don't close the gap on the inside. So once again, people can kind of slot through. So just bad cart placement by me, but I'll take the full responsibility there. Go down the inside right here on the Long Beach hairpin, but again, I don't get a good drive out. And then look at this, not in the draft. So losing time left and right. So I've created a bit of a buffer gap to give myself some time to get through the field. And my raw pace wasn't exactly that much greater than everyone else. Down the inside in turn four, passing one cart and looking to get a second guy right behind Quinn Allen Riley again. Here we are, three wide, and then Aiden Villancor giving me the nice bump draft through there, and we push our way through. So right now, I'm pretty happy. I'm in some clean track, and I can make some progress, but little did I know wouldn't exactly work out this easily. Now, coming up again to the new Otiva hairpin, I see these two guys battling in front of me, so I kind of lift to create a gap, and then I leave the inside open, so one guy gets by, another guy gets by, 
And the thing is, if you go offline, obviously less rubber, less grip, we're just gonna understeer off. Go down the inside and it worked and then it didn't. So we take a look back at what happened. I did really good coming through, had full control. The issue was, if you count my speed going in and cart 57, he was going much slower. And so naturally I hit him on the rear, I lose all my speed, he gains a bunch of speed. And then I start sliding. And then I find myself in this interesting situation where I'm on the inside and I look ahead and I realize this is not going well. So normally for the horseshoe turn, you wanna be on the inside line. It's the most grip, shortest distance, you name it. But if you look up ahead, they're almost seven carts wide. I mean, this is just chaotic. Then there's a guy starting to spin out right up there. And so at this point, I'm thinking, all right, I gotta make a commitment here. So I commit to go around the outside. Normally, the smart choice is the inside, but you can see in my peripheral, there's a guy right here. So I don't wanna cut him off. The other thing, if that cart stopped, you don't wanna hit him, obviously. So around the outside, I'm expecting the cart to slide and it really slid. I mean, there is no rubber on the outside there. And you can see me just understeer around and everyone's sliding, losing a bunch of time. And I actually gained a position based on the crazy transfer positions there with all those carts. But nonetheless, just unfortunate. This guy gets a bad exit, so I'm able to run wheel to wheel with him up the hill. And then I do end up getting by him. Coming up to turn four now, guy on my outside, another guy there, and we send it down. So passing two people going into turn four, which is actually a pretty good overtaking spot. Now on the back straight to the Monaco hairpin, I don't get the best drive out of Silk, and this guy sends it down the inside on me and Quinn, and then he bumps Quinn. And you can see I end up sliding and losing speed and losing all these positions. Now we take a look back at what exactly happened. So you can see he's on the inside, Quinn's on the outside, so I'm kind of going for that middle line. So I let him go, and I'm doing good, and you can see with the wheel starting to fight it because I got a little wide there. And then I got a cart coming on my inside and Queen is starting to slide. So he's gonna be way slower out of the corner. So I'm expecting him to be slow. And I'm in this position now where I end up bumping Quinn and then I start sliding. So I've just lost all my exit speed. And then all these carts just get right around me. And I'm now on the outside for horseshoe, which is terrible. And you can see we lose, it was almost five positions there. So not a good situation, but again, I'm on the inside for the Long Beach Hairpin. So send it down the inside again, seems to work fine for me. And then this guy gets forced to the tire wall. Now this was an incident which was very, very confusing at first because in person, I had no idea he was in the wall. And you look at the footage, it's very confusing. So you take a look, he's on the outside here and he's right up on this guy's bumper. And then I got a whole train of carts coming through on the inside and I'm just kind of in the middle, so. I'm um, the meat and the sandwich, if you want to call it that. So, cart 43 gives me a good push. The only issue is he doesn't exactly realize there's someone on my outside. And this guy, unfortunately for him, he's just forced straight into the tire wall and eaten up by it. And I almost am in the tire wall, a few inches off. So, yeah, not too good. And then going up the hill, obviously trying to get in that draft, which I did well. And then look at that four carts going up in a two by two pattern. Pretty interesting. We're coming up to turn one now, and this is the same two by two group. And you can see this guy right here is trying to go on the inside and then he's really closing the gap. I mean, he's almost in the barrier himself. So here I am behind in a terrible spot. Let's just be honest. Jumps the curb, bunch of contact. I get slowed down. And yeah, this is just, it's kind of stupid to be honest because the thing at Cal Speed is usually the fast way we're on the track, have another cart behind you and you kind of push your way around. And if you're battling like crazy for, let's be honest, this is 25th position, there's no point. And you can see there's already a huge gap starting to be created between the guys in front who are trying to catch. And because of the wind conditions, if you weren't in the draft, you were never gonna catch them. So this battling that I was caught in, it was just annoying, let's be honest. So I'm just trying to get around these guys and see what I can do. And there you go, two by two, pushing each other up. And so I'm trying to get in that draft, but I know if I'm not in it, that's it, my race is over. Coming to the Monaco hairpin, two of them still racing, and one guy goes wide, this guy gets a bad exit, but it's that situation where once again, I'm on the outside for Horseshoe. He's on the inside, doesn't really push me wide, but he uses the curb there, so I'm like, okay, that's fine. Because what that does is that puts me on the inside for the Long Beach hairpin. And voila, down the inside, and I'm leading, I tell him to bump draft me so he can catch him. But look at the gap up ahead. 
that's about a five second gap. And in this main race, which is 10 laps, we're never gonna catch him. Let's just be realistic. Throughout the lap, he's given me a nice good bump draft and we're somewhat catching him, not really much. I think we were gaining maybe two tenths a lap. So not what I was hoping for, but hey, something's better than nothing. The unfortunate part is he ends up getting a drive-through penalty, probably for that incident at Monaco. And because of that, I now have no one to push me. And so I'm just on track all by myself. So you can see no one behind me for a decent gap and no one in front of me for a decent gap just completely isolated. There's the white flag, last lap. And so at this point, I'm like, all right, we're not gonna catch the guys in front. No idea where the guys behind me are. I didn't bother looking. And so I'm just like, all right, we're gonna finish all by myself. So coming up to the Monaco hairpin, the three carts behind me are getting closer. And this guy, cart number 30, very aggressive, tries to send it down the inside and then doesn't really commit. And had he committed, I think he definitely could have had the position. So you take a look, hits me on the rear bumper, but he just carries in too much speed and he doesn't get the inside line. And then my card hops a little. And so he's, I know he's behind me now. And so my goal here is just defending the inside, which I'm doing. And he's giving me a nice push through there, which I could feel with the extra speed. And at this point I'm scooting over cause I do not want to let him go down the inside. So I push him over, but again, I leave him racing room. That's what you're supposed to do. And you can see coming up to the curb, I mean, I don't give him much room, I'll be honest. I make him use the whole curb. However, I had an instance where I was in the position of cart number 30 where I actually had to use the whole curb. And that is an overtake that's very possible to do. It's not a bad curb at the Long Beach Hairpin. It's actually one of the smoothest curbs in all the track. And that was the overtake where I got second in the B main in the sprint series in July. If you look at this scenario, one thing I didn't notice was he didn't exactly commit to it. So you see he just suddenly falls back. And if you come and look back at the footage frame by frame, and I want you to look specifically at his foot right here on the brake, because you'll notice he's still on the brakes all the way into the corner. And then if you look carefully at his foot, it's hard to see with the shadows, but he suddenly lifts off the brake. So he was braking extremely late, but not exactly controlled. So it was kind of luck or not for him overtaking. Here we are at the line, P23, and pulls for the camera, but yeah, just, kind of, I wouldn't say a dull race. There were some interesting moments, but not the most exciting overall. But hey, we moved up, so I'm fine with that. Positions gained is always good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And as always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.